So this unusual planet behind me, that's K218b, a somewhat unusual super-Earth discovered by the Kepler telescope that in 2023 essentially went viral because by using James Webb Space Telescope and by observing the atmosphere of this planet, some researchers claim to have discovered what's known as DMS or dimetal sulfide, an extremely important compound here on Earth that as far as we know can only be produced by life, or I guess in a chemical lab. And so back then, a few months ago, when this was actually discovered, this potentially suggested the discovery of some kind of life on this bizarre distant world. And though right now it's actually still not certain if DMS was really found or if it was some kind of a statistical anomaly, only additional observations will make this very clear. They haven't been done yet, but we'll definitely discuss this more once new studies come out. And by the way, if you want to learn more about the planet and the discovery, check out one of the previous videos in the description. But in this video, I actually wanted to just focus on DMS and of course its importance right here on planet Earth. And mostly because of a completely different study that just came out not so long ago that completely by accident discovered that DMS is actually produced by way more organisms than we ever believed and seems to be way more influential right here on planet Earth. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss DMS once again, but specifically focus on why it's so important on Earth and especially in, I guess, these somewhat unusual times when it comes to climate change. And so yeah, I guess in some sense, this is a climate change video after all. Mostly because I really love when YouTube adds one of those side notes right below the video because it makes me feel so special. Like YouTube actually cares or something. Anyway, on a more serious note, I basically wanted to briefly discuss how DMS actually affects atmosphere and, as we've learned from this particular study, how tremendously widespread it is on Earth and how it might actually even have a chance to, I guess, save our planet in some sense in the next few decades. So yeah, maybe some good news after all. And one of the main reasons I wanted to make this video is because I was actually working on a slightly different video connected to something else we've discussed previously in regards to cloud seeding, a somewhat controversial technique that basically proposes spraying various aerosols, specifically sulfur-based aerosols, somewhere in the upper atmosphere, in order to try to cool down the planet. And though I guess in theory it would work, not only is it actually super expensive, on top of this it might actually have a lot of negative effects, such as for example extending deserts in certain areas or causing dramatic changes in water circulation. Anyway, you can actually learn about this in one of the previous videos right there as well, but yeah, it's maybe not a good idea. And so when doing a bit of a research, I actually came upon this new paper that basically makes a very important conclusion. Nature might have found a much better way to mitigate all of this already with the other major discovery from the study being that we basically know so little about DMS and sulfur compounds right here on planet Earth and especially about various sources that might be extremely important in climate mitigation. And so DMS or dimetal sulfide, uh, not to be confused with DMSP or DMSO. They're all actually kind of related because one makes the other but they're actually extremely different in terms of their effects and what they're usually used for by various bacteria. And though for things like climate, it's actually DMS that seems to matter the most, for a typical bacteria, it's really DMSP, dimethyl sulfonylpropionate. But by itself, it's also a metabolite produced by various marine algae or basically various photosynthetic organisms that's then usually used and broken down by other organisms in order to form one of two compounds, either this one or DMS. And so the main point of this new study was really the discovery of a tremendous amount of new organisms possessing important genes that can actually produce DMSP and thus as a result produce DMS. Or just to rephrase this, they discovered an extremely common photosynthetic algae that seems to have genes for DMSP production, implying of course that DMS is way more widespread and it's produced in much larger amounts than we ever thought. But here this algae is important for another reason. It's actually what's known as a bloom-forming algae that are very famous for suddenly accumulating in huge amounts in various freshwater or marine environments, dramatically changing the color of water, but also obviously affecting the entire ecosystem. Here's just one of many examples from Lake Erie in North America. 
and as you can see this is easily visible from space. And unfortunately these blooms very often also produce a lot of toxic elements that do actually affect the ecosystem where they start. And while it turns out that in the last few decades these phytoplankton blooms seem to have increased by at least a few percent which has been linked to both pollution and possibly warming oceans. And though not all of these are hazardous or toxic, as you'll learn very soon, they actually do change the ecosystem and, most importantly, add a lot more stuff to the atmosphere. And well, as the study here discovers, a lot of these blooms also seem to increase the amount of DMS in the atmosphere as well. Or at least that's the implication based on this particular genetic discovery. Although once again, a quick side note, here the analysis was for DMSP, an extremely important compound that acts as a food source, but also helps a lot of organisms survive extreme conditions such as high salinity or even high pressure. And because this compound is produced in billions and billions of tons per year by a lot of these organisms, and they then break it down into DMS, it also plays a very important role as an active source for a lot of sulfur compounds. And a small fun fact, so that molecule of DMS is actually one of the reasons why the seaside smells the way it does. And so that ocean smell that many of us are familiar with is partially the result of DMS, but also some other stuff coming from a lot of different algae. It's also technically associated with a lot of other stinky stuff, such as for example rotten cabbage or even truffles. And turns out that by using DMS, various dogs and even various pigs are trained to find truffles somewhere in the ground. But I guess yeah, that's a bit of a side note. A much more relevant fact about DMS is that it eventually gets oxidized into a lot of other sulfur compounds, including sulfuric acid. And when this happens somewhere in the upper atmosphere, it very often results in the production of aerosols, which then lead to cloud condensation. This is based on a process known as cloud condensation nucleization, where a lot of tiny aerosols end up condensing into tiny droplets and eventually lead to clouds, which then leads to rain. And that's basically the principle of cloud seeding as well, except that in this case, this is I guess more natural. And so for many years now, scientists have been aware that DMS, coming from a lot of these marine organisms, basically ends up producing sulfur aerosols, which then lead to clouds, which then lead to more reflectivity on Earth, and thus cool down the planet. See, it's a climate video after all. But previously, it was actually assumed that DMS was mostly produced by things like coccolithophores, unusual shelled single-cell organisms that are actually very well known as an important source of calcification and even removing things like carbon from the ocean water. They basically produce these tiny shells that usually contain a lot of carbonates, which generally reduces carbon content. But nobody had any idea that the blooming algae seemed to produce just as much if not more DMS, essentially making this unusual biological sulfur compound even more prominent. As a matter of fact, it's very likely the most important sulfur-based compound on the planet that seems to directly influence the atmosphere of the entire planet. And so just to kind of summarize everything so far, so we have this new study that basically discovers that even more stuff seems to produce these sulfur compounds on the planet. And today we're pretty certain that many of these sulfur compounds are actually responsible for cloud seeding, increasing the cloud coverage on the planet and thus reducing the temperatures. But data also suggests that in the last two decades, the amount of these blooming algae has actually increased by at least a few percent, which means that more DMS is being released, more clouds are being produced, and the planet seems to be possibly naturally trying to cool itself down. And so even though DMS on planet K218b was possibly a false discovery, instead we seem to have discovered way more DMS right here on planet Earth. Which also of course implies that a lot of algae and a lot of microbes play a very important role in global climate regulation. And none of these bacteria were known to produce DMS previously, so this is indeed an extremely surprising discovery. In case you're wondering, the most abundant species in Earth's oceans, Pelagomonas calceolata, seems to be one of these discoveries as well. It basically also produces DMS, even though previously this was unknown. Here's roughly what they look like, compared to some of the other bacteria and some of the other species. And this also actually takes us to this somewhat unusual hypothesis proposed two decades ago as well. This is known as the CLO hypothesis, with this being an acronym for the four founders. Charleston, Lovelock, 
Andre and Warren. And it basically goes something like this. Warmer oceans lead to more phytoplankton, which produces more DMS, which then produces more sulfur, condenses more clouds, and thus cools down the planet, forming a kind of a negative loop. And though we obviously have no idea if this hypothesis is correct yet, I think right now there are a lot of crossed fingers hoping that it is correct. And the thing is, if it is correct, we're going to be seeing more of these guys pretty much every year, forming more DMS, which then form more clouds, forcing the planet to naturally cool down. And though interestingly we obviously have this graph that imply an increased production of DMS on the planet in the last two decades, here we actually also have this graph that basically also shows us an increased cloud coverage in the last two decades as well. You can find both of these studies in the description below, but here if we basically just look at correlation, there does seem to be a correlation between more algae leading to more clouds, possibly the result of warmer oceans. So basically a kind of a natural stabilization of the temperature on the planet. But obviously, maybe this is just wishful thinking, and maybe these are correlations that are actually not related and are actually caused by something entirely different. Either way though, for both climate studies and for microbiology, this by itself is a pretty important discovery, which basically highlights how extremely essential various microbes are on the planet, and how they don't just produce food for a lot of other organisms, they also seem to play a role in maintaining the climate of planet Earth. And if confirmed on a different planet, it means that something similar is happening there as well. And so that's the basic story of DMS, why it's important, and why finding it somewhere else would be a huge deal as well. Although here I guess it's also important not to jump to some premature conclusions. Like for example, we cannot expect algae to continuously cool down the planet, hoping that this is going to last forever. As a matter of fact, as a side note, a lot of previous extinction events that involved dramatic changes in temperature very often also involved similar algae. And so what I'm trying to say here is that we basically still don't really know much about this, and a lot more studies are required to try to figure out how all of this connects. On that note, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Once there are some additional discoveries about DMS on other planets, we'll come back and talk more about this, because this was actually one of the most exciting potential discoveries of 2023. You can learn more about this in the video in the description. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. The metal sulfur not permanent. The metal sulfur not permanent. The metal sulfur not permanent. Okay, I can do this better.